This is Teachable Moments with April podcast, and you guessed it, I'm your host, April. If you're a returning listener and a part of the Teachable Moments with April podcast family, welcome back. For those of you who are checking me out for the first time, well, hello and welcome. To everyone listening, look for the Teachable Moments that are all around you. Enjoy. April. So for this particular episode, we're going to look at Beyond Today magazine again, and we're going to look at an article entitled The Devil Goes to Church by Steve Myers. The devil is much wiler and maybe much closer than you think. The Bible reveals that he deceives the whole world, meaning he has even duped the churches and religious figures. How is this possible? Could you be deceived too? Now, believe it or not, Satan plays an enormous role in religion. He is very interested in what happens in churches. Now, we often think of the the devil as out there somewhere, but maybe on the attack. But do you realize that he may be much closer than you think. Now, have you ever considered that Satan goes to church? Is it possible that the devil has weaseled his way into your church? Now, God's word says in Revelation 12, 9, that the great dragon was cast out of heaven, and that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he has was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with them. Now, how much of the world has the devil misled and conned? Here God says it's what? The entire world. And that includes his deception in religion. So if you believe the Bible, you should recognize that Satan has deceived even churches. Now, what are the signs to look for to find out if Satan has infiltrated your church? The Bible reveals some of Satan's methods in its opening pages. Remember the story of the Garden of Eden where Satan said to Eve, As God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Genesis 3.1 Satan then contradicted God, saying, You will not surely die. Verse 4 That was a lie. It could be cast as partially true in the sense that Adam and Eve weren't going to immediately drop dead if they disobeyed God. Yet from the moment of succumbing, to sin, their eventual death as its cost would be assured. So the deception was on. They took from the tree of the, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It represented uh, deciding, okay, good and evil for themselves under Satan's influence, leading to a mixed up morality of truth and lies. And through many half-truths, Satan throughout history has led people to misunderstand God's word. He wants us to make decisions that lead us away from what's right. But you may think, I wouldn't be misled. My church couldn't, could be off track. Yet as we see here with Satan's first interaction with humanity, he does not come across as all evil all the time. Satan has a scheme, a strategy, and in 1 Peter 5, 8, we see another part of that particular strategy. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Now you're probably seeing nature shows presenting actual lions on the hunt. They hide and they're very, they camouflage very well. They're opportunists and then they strike. In the same way, Satan is evil, but not obviously so. He's deceptive, he's subtle, and he is very cunning. This is how we actually, and how he actually tried to undermine Jesus Christ as his earthly ministry began. Now, you may be familiar with the history and 
in the story in Matthew 4. Okay, Christ was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, and Satan came to Jesus and tempted him. He took Jesus from the wilderness to Jerusalem's towering temple complex and then did something shocking. He quoted scripture. He told Christ hmm, to go ahead and jump off and quoted at Psalms 91 verse 11 and 12. He, God, shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Now, that's indeed what scripture says. But did God, the Father, want Jesus to jump off a building just to prove a point? He did promise angelic protection, but it wasn't for show. So here we see Satan presenting the holy word of God in a totally wrong and evil way, using that to try to trip up Jesus Christ. That's Satan's strategy. The devil purposely misrepresents the word of God. He knows how to use scripture. Makes sense. But he'll distort it. He'll take it out of context. He'll change the meaning. So it's important to ask yourself, how well do I know scripture? Hmm. Do I know it well enough to prove a point? Can I justify what I believe and speak the truth? Now many times when the Bible comes up in discussion, the conversation goes something like this. Hmm, doesn't the Bible say something about that somewhere? Isn't it something like this? Or, yeah, I think that might be in the Bible. And too often, it's out of context. It's paraphrased, it's misquoted, or even contradictory of what the Bible clearly does say. Make no mistake, the devil knows the Bible. But he uses it deceitfully. He did that with Jesus, and he does it with churches. And you'd better know it and be able to apply it correctly, or you will be tricked and misled. Pretty scary, isn't it? It's interesting that Satan also went to church at the time of the apostles. Hmm. The apostle Paul wrote to the church congregation in Galita, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, as it wasn't really good news, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ at Galatians 1, verses 6 and 7. Here, the Apostle Paul knew that Satan was in the church to present an entirely different gospel that was a fraudulent message. So does your church teach the true message of Jesus Christ? Now exactly what was the message of Christ? It's God's message to mankind. It's the good news of God's purpose and his plan. It involves mankind's need for salvation and God's requirement that we repent from sin, accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, obey his commands, and believe and seek the reality that Christ is going to return to establish his kingdom on earth so we can be born into the family of God. Meanwhile, Satan goes to church to spread his influence and make things up, you know, mix it all up there. And sadly, most of what's called Christianity is built around a false message. Let me say it again. Meanwhile, Satan goes to church to spread his influence and mix things up. And sadly, most of what's called Christianity is built around a false message. Now, have you heard this passage at church? It's a powerful one. Listen to what the Lord your God demands of you. Worship the Lord and do all that he commands. Love him, serve him with all your heart, and obey all his laws. I am giving them to you today for your benefit. And this is at Deuteronomy 10, verses 12 and 13. At your church, do you hear much about obedience to God's laws? 
Jesus Christ certainly thought it was important. He said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? At Luke 6, 46. And then compare it to Matthew 5, 19, Matthew 7, 21, and Matthew 19, 17. The fact is, true religion requires obedience to God's commandments, which are given for our good. To improve your glucose control, we will work with you to guide you through a series of phases based on glucose targets from the American Diabetes Association recommendations. Wait, what? You can improve your condition? Yes. Type 2 diabetes is a condition of too much glucose in the body and we can help you reduce it. Keep an eye out for your setup kit, follow the instructions inside and get excited for this journey to improving your glucose. Satan goes to church, but you have to be on your toes to see that influence. You might be thinking, my church is fun to attend. And when you leave, you feel good about yourself, happy that you're not wrapped up in dull formalities like some congregations. Well, I get it. It's been a tough week. You want to feel positive. You want to be emotionally uplifted. And that's a good thing. But what is worshiping God all about? Is it about big screen projections, rock bands, and coffee shops? Hmm. True worship is so much more than just emotion and entertainment. Okay? Satan loves to stir up misdirected feelings. Is everything that feels good actually good for you? Remember, Satan convinced Adam and Eve to take from the tree of knowledge of good and evil to make what was wrong seem the right choice. Okay, and you can refer to Proverbs 14.12 and Proverbs 16.25. Today he goes to church to deceive, to twist uh, Jesus' message, to mislead, even perverting how, how you actually worship God. Now consider our most popular religious holidays, Christmas and Easter. Okay, do you find those as appropriate worship in the Bible? No, but what days to observe do you find in the Bible? Okay, God's own holy days. Yes, God is concerned about when you worship him, okay? Do you worship any day you choose, or do you choose or to worship on God's Sabbath day, which he defines as lasting from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset? That's the day referred to when Jesus says he is Lord of the Sabbath, Mark 2, 28. Remember, what happened to Adam and Eve? Please remember what happened to Adam and and Eve. They were banished and separated from God. Remember that Satan's most effective tool is deception. Now the Apostle Paul warned the young minister Timothy at 1 Timothy 4.1, in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Now, have you ever heard a minister tell you something that doesn't quite match with what the Bible says? What was your reaction to it? Did you just kind of accept it? Did you ignore it? What did you do? Now, notice that Paul gave another powerful warning in his next letter to Timothy. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. And this is at 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. What a powerful reminder. The devil 
tells a very compelling story. It sounds believable, and it even contains some true elements because Satan loves to mix it up. He loves to fuse things together to blend evil with the good. It can be convincing, and its deceptive power makes it more so, but it's actually fiction, deadly fiction. Now, Ephesians 2.2 in the New Living Translation says this, You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Satan is an influential and controlling spirit, working on humanity to produce an atmosphere of pure evil and rebellion against God. He's created a spiritual wireless network of sorts, And just like the air that surrounds us, it permeates our world. Just as the air around us is saturated with cell signals and TV signals and radio waves, the devil wants to control our minds through having us tuned in to his own personal mobile network, his dark web, his evil frequency. Satan saturates the world with his wicked spiritual broadcast of selfishness, sinful attitudes, and wrong moods, and our minds are all too receptive to it. The result? Satan influences humanity, including churches, to misunderstand and end up rejecting God and his law. Now, the Apostle Paul warns in 2 Corinthians 11, 4, that Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of what? light. He loves, he loves the masquerade. He loves to play the game, to disguise himself and be the pretender. Yes, it seems religious, it seems good, and it seems to be right, but it isn't. The world's religions, including most of Christianity, are built on the wrong, the wrong foundation, the foundation of Satan's deception. Now, maybe you're not convinced Satan goes to church. Okay, so far you're not not convinced. But here's something to think about. How much do you hear from Christian churches today about sin or about, let's say, the consequences of sin? Maybe you think it's not that big a deal, but your Bible tells you sin is breaking God's law. An example of this 1 John 3, 4. It's crossing over the line, okay? God has forbidden us to cross. Yet so many teach that Jesus was just about love and grace, but that doesn't give the whole picture, the big picture. So when Christ miraculously healed a man, he told him, take up your bed and walk, John 5, 8. Is that all he said though? No. Jesus further told him, Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. <clears throat> At verse 14, you see, the true message tells the whole story. God's people must be like God, living God's way. And whenever we find ourselves out of that perspective, not living God's way, that's rebellion. It's sin. It's unacceptable to God. Yet that's human nature through Satan's corrupting influence. Paul wrote in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, now the effects of the corrupt nature are obvious illicit sex, perversion, promiscuity, hatred, rivalry, factions, envy, drunkenness, wild partying, people who do these things, these kind of things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what does God say on the matter? Sin is a big deal. And if you're religious, Okay, you should consider whether you are striving to overcome that part of your nature in your life. Now, there is a solution. Repent. But you have to understand what that means. Repentance is heartfelt sorrow for breaking God's laws and turning away 
from committing sins. Now, it entails completely surrendering your will to God and really changing the way you think so that it changes your actions. You see more and more what's so bad about sin and what's so good about God. Now, his laws and his way of life, right? And you're grateful for the awesome sacrifice that his son Jesus Christ paid for your sins. Now, does your church teach about true repentance? It's absolutely, actually, absolutely required. Now, in Acts 26, 20, it says, All must repent of their sins and turn to God and prove they have changed by the good things they do. Now, the Bible says obedience is the proof of repentance. So, We demonstrate that our repentance is sincere by obeying God. Of course, that's the last thing Satan wants you to do. He doesn't want you to change. But you can overcome his influence and stop bowing to his control. Now, at Acts 2.38, it emphasizes the point and tells us how we can change. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what does this mean? Some think, okay, you receive God's Spirit by simply asking Jesus into your heart, or maybe you trust an emotional feeling as indicating you have God's spirit or maybe a minister told you that you have God's spirit or you simply by faith believe it or maybe you answered an altar call and were so overcome by emotion that you wanted to give your life to the Lord or maybe you read a little Bible track and prayed the sinner's prayer and considered yourself saved from that point on. Are all of these ideals and experiences overtly evil? They seem good and righteous to a great many people, but the devil has his foot in the door, even when it comes to the concepts of receiving God's Spirit. You may ask, how so? Well, let's compare these ideals to what the Bible says. At Acts 8.17, it tells us clearly how a person receives God's Spirit. And this is what it says. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now here it describes people who believed and were baptized. But to receive God's Spirit, they needed to have hands laid on them. Having a minister of Jesus Christ pray over you and lay hands on you after baptism signifies that a newly baptized member has been set apart by God that represents the actual manner and moment of receiving the Holy Spirit. So is that what happened to you? Does your church follow that practice or some other tradition? Christ was emphatic when it came to human tradition saying, for you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. And this is made reference at Mark 7, 8. So read history and find out what really happened over time. You'll see that fusing ungodly symbols and dates and man-made holidays and rituals, okay, into rituals, that word, rituals, into Christianity brought about an unbiblical religion that is still alive and kicking today. Now think about it. False traditions in Christianity. Holidays with Christian sounding names, yet ignoring God's instruction and his holy days. Okay? These are more examples of Satan's mixing of truth and error and making what's wrong seem right. Have you looked into these things? You'll find a powerful statement found at Isaiah 8.20 to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. It's true. Satan indeed goes to church. I hope you can begin to see how religion has been deceived by the devil and how true worship should be based on what God actually said and he actually instructs. Could your thinking have been affected? 
Don't let Satan influence you to compromise true biblical belief. Be aware of the warning signs. Ask these questions. Do you or does your church truly rely on the entire Bible? Jesus Christ said we are to live by every word of God. Matthew 4.4 and Luke 4.4. Does your church stress obedience to God, following his will and his way? The Apostle John wrote, Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 1 John 2, verses 3 and 4. Uh, another question to ask is, does your church teach about sin and the need to repent as a requirement to change? Does your church follow the biblical practice of baptism and laying off of hands to receive God's spirit? Reread the scriptures above in this article and speak. To, do they speak directly to this? They have not changed. Now's the time to realize who is determined to bend your thinking away from God. Satan loves to intimidate and, 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 and imitate to present his ideals as truth, but it's all for his own evil purposes in defying God. Stand instead among God's people. Defined in Revelations 12, 7, as those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We pray that you will seek, as Jesus said in John 4, 23, to worship the Father in spirit and truth. just listening to Teachable Moments with April podcast. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode. We invite you to stay connected with us on our other social media platforms such as TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, Threads, and YouTube. Also, check us out on our official podcast landing page on podpage.com slash teachable moments with April to see all our content in one place. You can leave messages and give feedback and more. Thank you.